man. Welcome back. Join the box ring episode 7. In this episode we create the shadow bottom pass. Now what do I mean by shadow bottom? First you should know, Fusion's renderer is very basic. We don't get the luxury we get with uh, renderers such as V-Ray or Arnold or all the fancy renderers out there. It means we have to fake many things. Now this pass I use to darken the bottom of the skull and uh, an easy way to do that is to hit the skull with a light from the bottom and then take the result, invert it and multiply it or use it as a mask. And talking about shadows, I can't stress out enough, shadows are best rendered using the software renderer, with a few exceptions of course. Now let's get started. Let's do that! Let's do that! Copy this renderer over, and then we bring over our scene objects. Now for this pass, we want the matte object. Create a Merge 3D, then branch out from this router and hook it into the Merge 3D and the Merge 3D into the renderer. And let's create another router here. Not there, there. Before we view the renderer, we need a light, otherwise we won't see anything. So let's grab this light here and copy it over for now. Hook it in. And let's see how it looks at the moment. Let's adjust our spotlight. Select the spotlight and uh, let's give this light 100% uh, white. This is because I want uh, the result to be a mask. So set the RGB to 1. For the intensity I just remove the 7 here and uh, the K and angle values are good as they are. In the shadow settings we want to set the density to the default of 0.5. The shadow map size is sufficient at 1024. And now comes my favorite parameter, the one I can't pronounce, the multiplicative bias. Set it to 6.15. And finally, for the softness, set it to 0.052. Okay, seems like not much is changing here, but it heavily depends on the frame and the light's position and angle. We're gonna change that now. Swing over to the transformation tab and we're gonna change the X, Y, Z offset. For the X, set it to 0.26447. For the Y, minus 2.0256. And for the Z, 0.2299. For the rotation, simply rotate the X to 90 degrees. And this one we set back to the default zero. And as I mentioned before, this pass will be inverted later, so all the bright areas will become shadows later. On some areas, I wanted to add some extra shadows, so we can do that simply by adding extra point lights. Let's create that point light and hook it in. Now you, you can see that we added some light or <laughs> shadows here. Let's tweak the light. The control settings are good as they are. We want to adjust the position only and I actually linked this light position to the skull's position just as we did before with the shadow ball. This time we don't need to go back to our loader section, we can simply grab the expression from the shadow ball. Yeah. Then go to the point light and right click on the ribbon, choose expression and then paste it in the expression. Do the same for Y and Z. Now, um, now, just to show you the difference, control P the point light. You can see it's very subtle, but it does add to the look and quality. Yeah. Next thing I did was uh, changing the skull's material settings. And this step is crucial. Yeah. Uh, you might want to do this with an inverted version in a second viewer. I simply duplicated and inverted the screen capture footage inside of Premiere to give you a better understanding of what I'm doing here. So add a replace material and the replace material has an inbuilt material so no need to create an extra blin or fong unless you want a certain shading model. 
Ok, open the specula drop down and change the specula exponent to 3.88. Especially in the inverted representation you can see that this will smoothen the transition between the shadows and the light areas. So great, you have concluded this episode, congratulations, and my name is Vito, I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. Wanna say yo ho ho, yo ho ho, say yo ho ho, 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 yo